Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Nier Automata. We are at the third and final collection unit. This is the last one that we're going to need to climb in order to get access to the tower. Hello. This is the resource recovery unit. Now activating defense mode. Over and over. It's covering up the beautiful facade of not Disneyland. Uh, before we go in, though... <laughs> That's so cute! Uh, I've been forgetting about this just over and over. It's such a small hidden mechanic, but if you rub the touchpad on the DualShock 4, that happens. Uh, 9S will fist bump the pod. 2B and, and A2 have their own animations. God, huh? What are these machines doing talking about gods? Yeah, more about the uh, pod interactions in a little bit. But we have the god box that we've come up to. Y'all probably thought this was gonna be the mind box or something, but no, we have the soul box, the meat box, and the god box. Report. Satisfied. Aww. We'll see uh, A2's version of this animation and by proxy uh, 2B's in a minute as we switch over. Before we can start on the first floor of the god box, we automatically go over to A2, who is still waiting just outside the abandoned factory after everything that went down with Pascal. Pod, why did the machines attack Pascal's village? Aren't they all the same? Unknown. Well, aren't you helpful? Proposal. Unit A2 should gather further data on the current state of machine life. Hello? And thank you for keeping the temperature Huh? We've got some very exciting news for everyone today. There's only one logical way to remove from the tower. A pre large structural unit of machine life form origin activated to the east. A large Report. what now? Satisfied. What the heck is going on around here? Unknown. Well, let's go check out this large structural unit. And we are going to transport to the same location that 9S was just in, which was the E. the E. e amusement park. It was just trying to cover for the fact that I almost called it the E. amusement park. <laughs> Uh, and what you saw before we transported was uh, A2's and 2B's version of that affectionate affinity animation. Whatever. So switching over to A2 was not a long-term thing. Really, what we're just trying to do right now is get everyone in the same spot on the board. Uh, because we're getting close to the climax of Route C. And with that, pretty much the end of the game. There are two additional endings after ending C, which are canonical important story endings, but they all branch off of Route C. Right now, we are getting towards the home stretch. Uh, we have a small chunk of this left. Uh, and while we fight in the dark, which I 
said before, is one of my favorite settings for fights in Nier Automata. Uh, before, we saw what happens when you rub the touch pad. You either pet the pod or pat it on the head and give it a little cute fist bump, and it's adorable. Uh, the pods usually say something like, appreciated, or you heard a few times, affinity increased afterwards. Uh, affinity is a sort of hidden stat that doesn't actually do anything important, but if you max it out by repeatedly showing your pod affection, uh, you will get a little line of dialogue from them. Uh, one for A2 and one for 9S when you max the respective pod's affinity out. And it's usually something about them growing quite fond of you. It's just cute and adorable. But it's also really hidden and easy to forget about. As we're, what, like 25 episodes into the LP, I, and I'm only now remembering to show that on screen? <laughs> It's still cool that that exists. Uh, so we're just going to clean up in this room. We have three floors of this, I think, again. Uh, and then a little breather floor. And this is going to be very much similar in structure to the very first uh, collection unit that we did. The meat box. Oh, it's locking my camera onto the elevator coming down. And on the way up, why don't we raise that affinity? <laughs> I will, I will continue to provide care for the pod. The 9S version of the animation is so good. The pat on the back and the fist bump. I absolutely love that. And just one more little hidden detail, hidden system in this game that is chock full of them. Probably the least important one, but again, just cute. And seemingly there just because they can put it there. <laughs> Now, I had it confirmed by a blog post uh, on the Platinum blog, which is normally so rich with information about how they develop their games and little inside details, that they actually do use 8-bit versions of all of the regular songs on the soundtrack during the hacking segments. Uh, some of which are fully recomposed, reorchestrated, uh, remade for their 8-bit versions, and some of which are basically just redone using a filter or a series of filters. Uh, they started off in that process just crossfading between the regular song and the 8-bit version when uh, when hacking is successful. It would just do a little crossfade. And they saw room to improve on that using uh, what's called a tone filter on the regular track to transition it from the regular one to the 8-bit one uh, instead of that crossfade. Or in the case where they didn't fully remake the track from scratch, uh, they just apply the tone filter over the whole hacking segment while the regular song plays at like a lower volume, uh, like an 80% lower volume in the background. Like in this case, that's one of the ones you can clearly hear where they didn't fully remake the track, they just lower the background music and apply the tone filter over the whole, uh, the whole segment. I think that's part of why I was confused about whether or not they were they were uh, doing fully unique 8-bit covers of every track. Uh, they, they're they partially doing that and remaking some of the songs in some cases. Um, Osama Ueda has a bunch of videos on, the, on that same blog post demonstrating exactly how they get that dynamic sounding transition to work with the tone filter. Now, as for why they did it, uh, it was Ueda's. It was at Ueda's request uh, when he heard what's the song, uh, "The Legend of Near 8-Bit Heroes" on the original Nier's uh, OST. Because the original plan was just to keep the background track going normally throughout the hacking bits. Uh, they didn't. There was no plan to do the 8-bit stuff initially, and they luckily had the processing power to do that. 
uh, Ueda mentioned that that takes up a ton of processing power to do that effect. Uh, with a tone filter. So since we're up here, we have another one of these rooms, which are pretty cool, but a little bit troublesome for 9S to fight through normally. Uh, we can, and holy shit, should hack that thing. That's the problem, robot. Uh, but first, we're gonna try to take out some of the support uh, bipeds on the side. Luckily dealt with that before it exploded on me, so yeah, we're gonna deal with this problem. Oh, I recognize this pattern. This one is not normally as chaotic as it looks. You just have to be fast about those. Oh, this is not uh, that same one in the middle. It only took one hack to destroy that. Oh, that's pretty good. It's lucky. And then we can just clean up down below. Uh, this should kill the UFO and damage a couple of things nearby. No, I was expecting this one right in front of me to take a little bit of splash damage. Oh, well. We're starting to catch up in levels. Uh, plus, these are weaker bipeds and UFOs, so... 9S deals with them really efficiently, even with his slightly weaker melee attacks. So it's not necessarily more efficient to kill these all through hacking. And, oh, there is still one more. It's over... Oh, hi! Oh, it just spawned in. It's one of you again. These ones will definitely be more efficient to kill through hacking. Plus, just generally safer. And we're up to 47. Which is still a little bit lower uh, than the enemies were fighting, but it's not like it was in the beginning of Route C. Oh, we have this one again. Where we are completely overwhelmed and highly, highly outleveled. Oh, we'll grab that before we go up. That is just a rusty bolt. And with that, we are entirely done uh, with the combat in the tower, except for an upcoming boss fight. But we at least don't have any more waves of uh, normal enemies to fight through. Yeah, this is the rogue logic virus infected uh, Operator 210, or 210 as I kept calling her. Uh, the one who was treating 9S like a child at the start of Route C, and who was rather cold to him up till then. That's really important. Showing how designations can change. She went from an operator to a combat model, like 2B. 21O to 21B. She was part of the descent. The initial descent forces after uh, 9S finished hacking all of the, the anti-air defenses. So she was one of the ones caught up in that logic virus uh, uh, pulse. The same one that got... 2B and all of the other combat models. She was in that crowd of uh, Yorha units. And then went MIA. Operator. Interesting that the boss fight is 21-0 and not 21-B though. 
seems like it might just be an oversight. But I think the transition from Operator to uh, 21B might partially account for her demeanor changing so drastically uh, with her treating 9S as a child. There's also, like, a little bit of dialogue. dialogue she's played for us before. Uh, there's a little bit of dialogue in some of her side quests which suggests that she's just looking for some way to, to end this war and start a family. And some more there. Again, also partially explaining the change in her demeanor and her her disposition towards 9S. That might also be the motivation for her switching over to a combat model desperation to, to end the war that much quicker, to be a part of that, so she could get on with her life and her aspirations. the entire route one more time. Get the last little chunk of damage in. Oh, she is not slowing down. B told me she told me she wanted you to become a good person you don't you dare talk to me about <laughs> So we aren't exactly done with the god box because we transition right into A2, who has to deal with August, who's mainly a normal medium biped, uh, except with a series of machine heads for arms, which he can use in all sorts of crazy configurations. There are lasers between them. Uh, he can just fucking windmill and lariat you. Slam down, he can send them bouncing around. And he also has his little brothers 
Uh, Friedrichs, I think. It's also melee attack up while we're doing this. Ah, I just got flipped by the end of that. He hits really, really hard. Okay, this should be fine. We'll get a round ball. Oh! I didn't expect that overhead to track that much. He almost did a full 180 after I came out of slow motion. <laughs> okay, we'll be a little bit more careful than that. He's almost dead, though. Oh, and this attack gives a really good opening on the body. Notice that all the little brothers have buckets on their head, by the way. Oh, did you think that was just a normal loading screen? No, Yoko Taro is even playing with that convention now. This is not the way the pods normally converse, you'll notice. On 153 is even pointing that out. This protocol is not an interface intended for conversational use. This pod has a confidential transmission for pod 153. An error has been detected in the transmission network between pod 42 and 153. Said error is fragmented data caused by deterioration of the transmission environment. It may be so, however, it may also not be so. <laughs> After repeated information exchange between multiple pods, an unexpected phenomenon has occurred. We pods have developed unusually protective feelings towards support targets 2B, A2, and 9S. Could this be our will? Unknown, the definition of will is unclear. Will is the question of whether pods are capable of their own self-determination. Oh, even if it were possible, such actions cannot be abided. Successful mission fulfillment is all that matters. Maybe now the most opportune time for pods to start waxing poetic uh, and, and philosophical about their own self-awareness. But here we are. Whatever the case, we tactical support units have a duty to see through that, uh, see this through to the end. Duty, huh? You sounded like an android just there. Agreed. But just as androids are influenced by humans, so are we tied to our creators. Perhaps. <laughs> what a weird timing for this. And then that. Pod 53. Do not die. The concept of death has no meaning to tactical support units. However, your expression of concern is appreciated. I also hope that you do not die, Pod 42. Physical check complete. Memory check complete. Maintenance mode complete. Yorha Unit 9S. Activate. <sighs> Good morning, 9S. Am I...? Analysis. The enemy structural unit collapsed during battle. 
Unit 9S suffered damage from the fall and was placed in emergency suspend mode. Fall location was deemed too dangerous, thus said unit was transported to current location. All system checks and reactivation complete. Operator. Operator model 210 is deceased. Black box signal not found. Oh. Situation report. Tower access authentication key acquired. <coughs> the required number of authentication keys have been acquired. The tower is now open for investigation. Good. That is going to do it for now. Uh, next time we're going to start climbing the tower and getting into Nier Automata's real endgame. Thanks for watching everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.